Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Chantel, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the flow of compilation and simulation within Active HDL. We know that compilation and simulation are some of the most fundamental concepts for design and verification. And Active HDL makes the whole process smoother with automatic detection and employment of widely used HDL compilers and with a robust simulation environment. So to begin compiling and simulating, first there needs to be a workspace open with an active design. For this video, I'm going to be using the sample design press controller. And now with an opened workspace with an active design, notice the source files inside of the design browser and notice the little status icons next to their source file type icon. These blue boxes indicate that these files have not been compiled. And because they're not compiled, you can also see that the active working library has no compilation data inside yet. And before compiling, you can change your design's compilation settings by going to Design, Settings, and go to the Compilation section. From there, you can specify settings for each HDL source type. Also, by going to Tools and Preferences, you can change the global settings of each HDL compiler. And so for this video, I'm actually going to change the VHDL settings underneath Design and Tools. And I'm just going to check Enable Debug for both. And what that allows me to do is that it allows me to create breakpoints in my code as well as collecting data so that way, if I'm going to use code coverage later on, I have data collected for the coverage database. So now that the compile settings are done, we can now compile our files. Right click on the file or click on the file and press the compile button in the main toolbar. In the console window, we can see the line that initiated the compilation and we can see that the compilation was successful. This is also denoted by the green check mark icon next to the file in the design browser. And once the file has been compiled, we can see its compilation data has now been added to the working library. If you compile a file and the compilation was unsuccessful, you'll see the compilation error inside of the console window below. You could see the error message in red and you could also see that the file has a red X icon next to it in the design browser. When you click on the error message, it'll actually direct you to that error located inside of the code. And you could see that it's marked by this red triangle along with the red line. And I could see here that the semicolon was missing for this line. So I'm just going to add that there. And from there, we just compile again. And now we can see that the compile was a success. So now I've individually compiled these two files. I'm going to compile the rest of them all together. To compile all, you're just going to click on this compile all button. Or you can just click on your active design, right click it, and then click on compile all. You can see that after compiling all, you can also see the rest of the file's compilation data has been added to the active working library. And going back down to the console window, scrolling up the console window, you can see the macro command used to compile all the files. Since I enabled debug for my VHDL files, you could see the dash dpg switch with the acom command. And speaking of macros, you can actually generate a macro script for a compilation. To do that, you can right click the active design and go to design compilation order and generate the macro from there. But if you don't want to change the compilation order, just click on generate compilation macro order. From there, name your macro file and specify your settings and then hit generate. You can see the new macro has been added to the design. Double clicking on it will open the file in Active HDL, and you can edit it from there to include more commands, switches, and arguments. 
And now that all the files have been successfully compiled, we can begin simulating them. There are two ways you can go about this. The first way I'm going to show is by macro, specifically a macro file. You can input these in the console as well, but the macro file makes it a lot more manageable. And uh, this design already has one, so I'll be using that. And notice the asm command line. It has the asm command, some switches, and the name of the top-level entity it wants to simulate. At the end of the macro file, there's an nsim command that ends the simulation. In between those two commands are wave commands for the waveform viewer. From there, you would just click on execute script. And you could see how the file compiled, simulated, and generated a waveform view of the top level unit. And now for the second method, you can simulate through a top level unit. But keep in mind that you need to apply stimuli to the unit. Otherwise, when you simulate, the signals won't produce any value. There are three ways to do this. You can create a test bench file, or you can initialize simulation and use the force command in the console window or macro file to drive a signal, or you can set stimuli with the stimuli button. I'll be using the test bench file for this instance since a test bench file already exists for the sample design. From there, go to your working library and click on the desired top level unit. Click set as top level. Once you've done that, you can click on the initialize simulation button or initialize from right clicking on the top level unit. Once initialized, we can now view our simulation through a waveform. Click on the open waveform button and click and add signals to your waveform. For this, I'm just actually going to click and drag the top level unit into the waveform for my signals. Now we can finally run our simulation. You can press run and it'll run until you stop it or until it has no more signals to read. Using run until will run the simulation up to a certain time point and run for will allow you to run through the simulation one simulation step at a time. You can also restart your simulation if you want to run it again. Along with simulating our design unit, you can also do a timing simulation with an SDF file. To show this, I'm going to close this workspace and open up another sample workspace called Vital Glitch. This sample design, as you can see, already has an SDF file. And to check if it's part of the design, just make sure to go to Design Settings and under Simulation and SDF, we should be able to see this SDF file in that list. And then from there, inside of the macro script, you can run a timing simulation by using the SDF type switch in the asim command, followed by the SDF file. Or also, you could just go back to the design's SDF settings and then set that SDF file to yes under load. Uh, once you initialize the simulation with the SDF file, there will be some messages in the console window that indicate that the SDF timing file was successfully read for the simulation. From there, execute the script or run the simulation. And if you were to run the same design without the SDF file, the simulation results would turn out like this. And that's about it for the flow of compilation and simulation in ActiveHDL. I hope you guys found this useful, and thank you guys for watching.